Hey guys, No Nonsense Know How here and welcome to another electric transportation review video. This one's going to be on the Aventrek Mac Rover 100. It's an electric bicycle with an advertised range of 28 miles under electric power only or up to 50 miles if you're pedal assisting it. It'll be the first electric bike I've ever owned or tried. We're starting in the basement like usual. I'll give you some tips on putting it together and then take it out. We'll see if that max range is accurate and I'll give you my opinion on it. Now they also have their own video on how to put this together so I'll drop that link down below because I think they did a pretty good job visually showing you how to do it. But let's tear it. Looks like it came packaged pretty well. Hopefully no damage or anything. By the way this box is 80.9 pounds so be careful when you're lifting it. We can see off the rip they did a great job packaging it. No damage to the axles. And this bike's got full size 26 inch wheels. Fat tire, four inch. These are gonna be awesome off road. Before going any further, I'm gonna pull the battery pack out. I assume that's in here. We'll get this on charge since you always wanna fully charge the battery before you go riding. We'll check that battery pack out. It's got a meter on it. Oh, you probably gotta turn the switch on to check that though. Yep, we got uh, four bars on there. We'll still charge it though. And there's your charge port. Not very heavy, so wouldn't be bad to keep us uh, spare with you. Wouldn't be unreasonable. This is 36 volts, 13 amp hours. So I got our charger in here. So we got the user manual, the pedals, the derailleur bracket, and some tools, and this should be the charger. Now the beautiful thing about this bike too is they advertise a battery charge time from dead of only three to four hours. So this is a 42 volt output, three amp charger. Very nice to see that. A lot of bikes come with a little dinky one amp charger and take like eight or nine hours to charge. So that's pretty sweet. And you wanna charge that till the red light turns green. Use some cutters, cut the rest of these zip ties off, but quick tip, if you cut them right there, and then you pull the one end out and you can save the rest of this uh, zip tie to reuse it on future stuff. You see, recycling's great, but reusing is one step above and remember, hoarding pays off. So with everything off the bike, I don't see any signs of damage at all. They did a really nice job packaging this and I'm looking around the frame, the welds are very heavy duty looking, high quality. It's got cable actuated disc brakes on the front and rear. The kickstand looks real, real beefy. It has like a plastic bottom on it with a, a wide foot so it won't poke into the ground like a standard kickstand. Uh, here's a look at some of the stuff that came with. Oh, this is, comes with the interface manual for the display. Uh, the owner's manual, which is over here. I gotta look through that still. Some Allen keys, your pedals, which are made out of aluminum and marked left and right. Keys, a tool for tightening everything down, like the wheels, the derailleur bracket I already showed you. The seat seems of great quality. And yeah, first glance, I'm pretty impressed so far. It's even got the Shimano shifters on it. An aluminum front fork that's got 80 millimeters of travel. Telescoping, looks great quality. Let's get her together. For the bars, you're gonna spin the headpiece 180, face it forward, and then take this cap off using the four millimeter, the bridge. Well, actually, yeah, one piece bridge. And then put your bars on with the cables routed properly and install the bridge. They advertise in the manual to tighten it uh, one, two, three, four, but just make sure you go gradually and evenly and don't over torque it. These aren't huge screws. They look like four mil or five mil screws. Once you have the bar centered and clamped down evenly, you can slide the reflector over, use the enclosed uh, Phillips to tighten that, and then come over to this side, snug down the five millimeter on the top, and then each of these four millimeter screws, make sure your bars are straight before you do that. And then there's a three millimeter Allen on the bottom of the display. However, I didn't see a, a three mil Allen in the kit, so I just grabbed one. Thread your pedals on. The right side is standard thread, and then the left side, lefty tidy instead of lefty loosey. And it comes with the tool for snugging those down. Make sure to snug them real good. And then the seat post already has the reflector mounted on there. You can drop the seat down into there, and then it's just got a standard quick Coupler, a quick clamp on there. So once you tighten this nut a little bit, you can then clamp it. It shouldn't be too tight, but it should have some resistance. You shouldn't be able to just push it right back over. We don't have the front wheel on yet, but it looks like the seat might be leaning forward a little bit more than I'd like. So if you want, you can loosen this six millimeter Allen, it looks like on the bottom, and then adjust the angle of the seat. Use the enclosed tool to loosen these two nuts and remove the dummy axle. I found it necessary to get a socket for getting the the nut on the inside because you can't really get it with the wrench. Pop that axle out of there. Slide the paper out from in between the brake pads. And probably better with two people sliding this wheel on, but let's see if I can 
drop it into place without hurting the bike. When all no problem, just make sure you have the washer on the outside of the fork. You snug each of these nuts down and you can use the enclosed wrench on there without any problems. Nice and tight. Well, that was easy. Let's pick it up now. The net weight on this is 61.7 pounds. Well, got the battery out right now, but that feels pretty darn light. While I put this together up on the table, you would certainly normally want to put it together on the ground so you can make sure you get your bar alignment dead on. I actually had to tweak mine. And then with the wheel on, and looks like I don't have to adjust that seat at all, this is its max height. If you pull that any further, it has a little line that says, you know, minimum insertion insertion depth that way it has some contact in that tube and this bike is rated for they say on their website 5.5 to 5.9 feet tall so i'm actually six foot three and i'm thinking the height so far it looks just about fine for me we'll find out shortly i did forget to show you guys to put the derailleur on the or the derailleur guard so guard so just uh, two four millimeter bolts on that remove those from the frame and bolt that on the brake levers and the seven speed shifter didn't need to be tightened down they were already snug so i just adjusted the bars to where they were at a nice position and then if you do need to adjust your brakes which i didn't have to surprisingly you have your micro adjustments up here and then down on the caliper a five millimeter allen you would loosen and you could just pull a little cable super easy that's what's nice about these over hydraulic brakes is they're just easier to adjust and deal with and you don't have a master cylinder to go out bad or nothing like that you could replace a cable with a universal one from walmart if you were out on a gym uh, so yeah there's the throttle action feels real nice i take the reuse and recycle thing real seriously like on this axle i'll throw this in my or the dummy axle I'll throw it in my studs drawer along with all these other studs and then i just set the tire pressure up to the max rating of 20 psi on the sidewall if i have to drop that down over time then i i will and uh yeah while that battery is finishing up i'll probably finish charging i'll finish the drum brakes on the back of this and then we'll go for a good ride 20 minutes later brakes are all done let's go grab that battery we got the green light go on the charger so insert your key and then you can see when you turn this this little pin pops out so leave it in the unlocked position line your battery up properly and then slide it down turn your key remove it make sure the battery's in there properly turn your power on make sure the charging port's covered up we can see we got four bars on there and then long press the m button and it should fire up here we go all right so we're showing two four six bars on the battery and hopefully you can see this kind of okay on the assist down here right now it's showing no bars so you got one two three four five modes of assist this would be zero assist if you just want to pedal the bike regularly. We got zero miles on the odometer, miles per hour right here. I love that it's not in kilometers an hour because usually everything I get that's electric, it's always that way. So let's uh, let's go hit the road now. Uh, we're going to take a trail and I'm going to go full electric, no pedaling unless I just kind of need to scoot around a turn or something or whatever. But we'll see what it does full electric. Again, they advertise 28 miles. I'm hoping to get at least half of that based on my experience with electric transportation. I'm 180 pounds. It's 50 degrees out. We have minimal daylight left so let's go make sure you're always safe and put a helmet on not a bad idea to do elbow and knee pads too first thing i'm doing is just kind of running it through the gears to upshift i'm in gear number one right now you just press that once there's gear two three four five six and seven so it actually skipped through six and went right to seven definitely need some adjustment on there we'll go over that another time usually it's pretty normal with new bikes you have to adjust the derailleur and the, the shifting system so with with zero uh, assist i mean i'm not used to this bike at all you can see it rides awesome with with no hands up oh, it just shifted a gear on its own and it actually feels great so that's what i love about this off the rip is the you, know, you don't have to use the battery you could use this as a bike even without the battery there's no drag whatsoever which by the way this has a 500 watt hub motor and look at that no resistance at all so i'm in the fifth gear and if i've hit a hill or i'm feeling lazy all i got to do is press one once on the plus and now i'm on one bar power system i already it's like i'm still working but it's just a little bit easier to get going so if you hit a hill now let's try uh if i pump this all the way up one two oh I see. all right this is fast this is great so that pedal assist on five is like it's that's unbelievable i mean as soon as you hit it it's just ripping i'm pointing this down a little bit so you guys can see what's going on but uh, let's leave it in gear five five power assist and start from a dead stop okay wow so that's effortless to get going of course you would normally want to probably start in a lower gear puts less load 
on the, the motor back there. Now how about the same test with five bars and we just accelerate since that's what, there it is, you twist the throttle and you're rolling. So this first full test, we're gonna leave it on five bars and we are gonna see how many miles we get. I've started met my ride on my phone too. And uh, yeah, let's go hit the path. Let's take it down some steps here. See how this thing handles and if it cracks them too with the extra weight. Here we go. Oh, all right, so that actually, the kickstand, well, let's see here. So what happened is the kickstand actually flung down on its own under the, it's not really designed for this. And then it felt like the front fork bottomed out and we lost the speaker too. That's okay though, but here's what we came down. I mean, that's a solid, what, 10 stairs or whatever it is. So not really designed for that, but uh, just goes to show you that it, it can do it. It just might. You might want to tie your kickstand up if you're going to be doing crazy stuff like that. We'll have to see later if there's any adjustment on these forks. Because, yeah, for my weight, they actually do bottom out fairly easy. So unless you got a broken leg, I can't see a reason you would ever not pedal to move. I mean, it's just, it's so effortless when it's on assist five. There's really no reason to use this throttle. Uh, when you, it's actually, like, it's just so, it's almost easier. This thing accelerates. If you just rotate your feet, you, I'm not even putting effort into it. It accelerates so fast. It's quite, quite remarkable, really. We're maxed out on this gravel canal path and we're showing 19.5 miles per hour. 19.7 now. So that's a very respectable uh, speed. Let's check our GPS though. And I'm showing 19.2 on here, so close enough. It keeps fluttering around 20, yeah, there's 20. So it's very capable of hitting 20 on the flats. Loving this thing. Listen guys, I don't hit the gym, and look at this. I can one arm this thing, no problem. And I, I don't work out. It's, it's heavy, but no reason you can't carry this up some stairs, or if you had to, probably even throw it over your head, frack. It's a little heavy, a little heavy for that. But you can do it. Let's see if that kicks in, bounces down again. Now, and heck, if you're careful, you can even lift the bike up with the motor, look at this. Boom, no problem, man, you're walking through somewhere. Good to go. Guys, rip it. I gotta try some hill climbing stuff later in this video, and we'll go hit some mounds and see how it does with that, but I don't want to affect the range test, so let's continue on with that for now. We're now four miles in and we've dropped two of the six bars, but let me see if I let go of the, the gas, the throttle. Okay, so it went back up one bar. Uh, I, I just wanna say I am doing this trip full, just electric, but it, it doesn't make sense. You're much better off doing a little bit of pedal uh, because it, well, it just cruises much nicer. It takes a while to get up to speed and I've, I've already hit a couple like inclines and if you hit any slight incline, you have to pedal. You cannot go up it under motor. I mean like maybe 2% grade, yeah, but anything more than that, you're gonna have to pedal a little bit. So these trailers on the end of the canal, they got the best spot in this whole trailer park. Right along the canal, you put a rowboat in there. Good to go. Alex just shows how cold it is, There's still ice there. Although it was a high, I think in the low 50s today. So gonna get chilly tonight though. Don't be a chilly ride back. Oh look, that guy's actually got a rowboat. Check it out. Living luxury life. I always, people always rag on the, the trailer. Oh, the trailer parks. He's from the trailer parks. But like, I would much rather live in a trailer park than an apartment. Because you got a fire out back, you got a shed, you got some grass to mow. It's great. You got your own place. I'll we'll show you real quick this power one above here. What that means is how much power is being used by the motor. So as you start pedaling harder, you'll see that actually goes down if you're pedal assisting it. But if you pedal not at all and you're just holding this, uh, then and you're gonna see that go fully up. See, check it out, here it goes. Whoa, I can't even hold the bike. It's actually, let's see if I can hold this. Um, yep, there it goes, so you see that? However, it seems to step it up. Like right now, if I hit full throttle, oh, now it's going full power now. But if I start pedaling, in assisting it, you'll see that that actually starts dropping down and it shows we're not using as much power. But again, we're going just electric. I know I've said that like 20 times by now, but yeah, full electric, baby. I think it goes without saying, if you come to a stop, you should drop it down to the first gear and give it pedal assist. But if you don't, here's how long it takes. See that shutter there? Because it barely had enough power with that hub motor 
to get going and I'll just do real time how long it takes to get up to top speed right now. Uh, you can see if, if again, like I was saying, if you hit any kind of hill, you have to give it assist because it doesn't have a ton of torque. It's not a belt drive motor. You know, those hub motors. So boom, there we go. We're uh, 18.5 and 19 miles an hour. So that didn't take too long and then you're cruising. This path is a little sticky too because of some, some of the mud. So this test today, I'm sure we'll, we'll see what we end up with. But uh, again, I'm hoping it to be at least 15 miles range. That would be nice. And so here's a little bit of a hill. I'm gonna show you what it does on this hill. We have drop speed. If I started pedaling, it would help great, but it's just drop and drop and drop it down. We're at 12 mile an hour. And it, it made it up. So as long as you have your speed before you hit a hill, it should go up, but don't expect to be doing 20 uphill without pedaling. By the way, the brakes work awesome on this thing. They very nice engagement. They don't lock up real easy or anything. And they work well. I do want to point out that when you're using the throttle power assist, if you mistakenly hit or grab one of the brakes and you leave that on, it, it will turn the power assist off. So it does have switches on each of these brakes, even though it doesn't have brake lights, which is a good feature. We're at 10 miles now and only showing one bar on the battery, unless, let me see if I let off. That goes back up to two, three bars. There you go. So let's keep it going. You don't really get an accurate reading if you're holding down the throttle on that. Now, I do also want to point out that if you let go of the throttle, of course, all your power goes away. And uh, when, when, like right now, all right, I got full power. I'm going to show you how I let off. When I go back on, you see it doesn't give you anything for the first few seconds and then it slowly starts creeping. It still hasn't done anything. And I'm throwing, there it is. And it slowly starts kicking on the power. So it's like a, a gradual increase of power if you're moving already and you accelerate. If you're stopped and you hit it, it just goes full power immediately. And sorry about this lighting, guys. It's definitely getting dark now, but hopefully we can finish this, this first uh, ride. Well, we made it to our first destination and we're showing three bars after stopping. While I was still accelerating, it was actually flashing on one bar, but we're back up to three after stopping. We're showing 11 miles on here and 11.03 miles on that my ride. So that's pretty accurate. I'd like to see that. Uh, stopped over here at uh, Eatree in Bristol. I'm gonna meet up with Downstater ADV. To turn this off, you can long press the M button and that powers it down. Of course, you could also just turn off the battery too, which I'm gonna take this battery off since I didn't even bring a bicycle lock. It's a good area though. I'm gonna slide that off and that's the best form of, well, security because this is pretty expensive itself. So if somebody takes the bike, at least still got the battery, right? Hey, you stay strong, all right? Be good out there. All right, see you. Every time you turn this off, it does go back down to one bar assist. So I'm gonna roll that back up to five bars. We're actually showing in between three and four bars. It's bouncing between on our battery power let's see what we got down here if you hold this we're only down one bar so we still got three out of four i started that by run too so let's get it and there we are 7.3 miles is all she made it till it shut down uh however it held 19 and a half miles all the way up until that point and then it just kind of just shut off so unlike a lot like my electric scooter it will start losing power midway on the battery this did not do that it held very linear speed across the entire battery uh, luckily alex is going to be passing this way so i'll probably just throw it in the back of his truck instead of riding another six miles home seven maybe since i took the long way but yeah i am thoroughly impressed with that range even though it's not the 28 advertised under its own power uh what is that 11 plus uh, seven so we're like just over 18 miles i am 180 pounds six foot three so i'm a larger guy i think if you were you know smaller person you might be able to get over 20 easily because the extra weight makes a huge difference on electric transportation i don't know if you guys can see it but i'm pedaling 15 mile an hour with no battery and it's pretty darn easy it's actually not bad i could totally make it home like this oh by the way if you want to toggle between the trip you just hit the m button and that goes in between so we got 18 miles on this baby now all right there it is were we able to get into his four foot bed <laughs> And the, uh, the Evan Trek is a champ. Back home and I've just plugged this battery in. When you're plugging it in, the, it's keyed, but you can see there's an arrow on here and that lines up with the little dot. Uh, so you can't mistakenly plug it in backwards. So we still got to do a pedal assisted ride another day, but I'm going to tell you after this first initial 18 mile ride, I am absolutely blown away by this bike for lack of better words. The only complaints I can tell you that I've been thinking about throughout the day today is the lack of lighting on it so no headlight and no tail light or brake light no cup holder no bell and no storage at all of any sorts uh, of course these are kind of all add-on things anyway that you could you could 
put yourself, but it would just be nice for the price on this uh, if it would include at least bare minimum lights on it. But for overall build quality and rideability and just general being an awesome bike, I, I like it. I'm also a big fan that these cables go inside of the frame, the ones that run down to the motor, so those aren't exposed. You do have the brake cable on there, but that's pretty standard. I guess the only thing left to do is put it to the test some more and see how it works out. But so far, giant thumbs up for the Macro Over 100. This thing is freaking sweet. If you follow this channel, you know how much I like electric transportation, in particular electric skateboards and now scooters, but this is the first bike I've had, and I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're looking to get some e-transport, a bicycle is definitely the way to go. I mean, just the fact that you don't even need the battery to use this as reliable transportation is worth its weight in gold. Like a scooter, kinda can use it, skateboard a little bit too, but this, you could totally ride this 20, 30 miles without a battery if you had to. It's all terrain, it's a wonderful unit, and if you're gonna go with any kind of e-transport, definitely consider a bicycle. I'm gonna let that charge up. I'll let you know how long it takes right here, hoping it only takes four hours. We'll check back. Now right, we're back another day, and we're gonna try a couple hill climbs. I'm uh, carrying the phone in one hand and a pack of, six pack of Sprite in the other, and we're gonna try to motor up this. So let's, let's see what happens. Uh, again, I'm just first gear. Whoa, all right, here it goes. Yeah, nope. All right, so that, oh, it's try, it tried going. It got up onto this hill, and with that laxy daisy effort, it didn't do much. So let's, let's give it a, let's give it a real go. First gear. Well, I gave that everything I had. We were in the first gear, went at it with some speed, and we did make it halfway up, but totally lost power, cut out on me up the hill. And I mean, I can't show you the actual angle here. Now that we made it up that, let's try to get up this hill, see what happens. I'm gripping the right bar with the camera, so it's probably gonna be all blurry, but we'll give it a go. Yes. So we just made it up a pretty steep incline, a little bit less steep than the last one, and it was borderline, but it did it. Now I'm in this kind of like thick soupy stuff, but uh, these fat tires are really helping out big time. Right here's another great example of that. I'll go side by side with this other one. And it hasn't rained at all in the last few days. Cruising, same trail. Look at that, side by side, night and day. You got like three inch imprint here and the fat tire, maybe a quarter inch. And this is really soft. I mean, look, if I press that with my fingers, this is soft stuff. Fat tires for the win. Well, even this is a mild hill climb and in the first gear, it does wonderful. If you try to climb a mild hill like this in a top gear seven, seventh gear, well, it's without grabbing the throttle. I mean, you actually, I don't, no, the motor's just, it's overloaded. I guess it's not sensing your input. It's kind of going, but it's really struggling. So if I drop this back down as I pedal back down, even the third gear, now it's, it's no problem. It's, it's determining good torque input and pedaling up that hill, no problem. That leads me to believe that there's something that's able to sense the torque input from this sprocket. Uh, however, it also has to be rolling, so I can't just push forward on this with force and the bike gets going. I rode around on these hills for a few minutes and I can conclude that the motor helps you a ton unless you hit something really steep. If you do, you're good in the first beginning part and then the motor gets overloaded and it just kind of cuts out on you and you're on your own. Doesn't have enough gears, you know, it's not a 21 speed, it's only a seven speed. Uh, but for mild hill climbs, works really good. It seems an appropriate time to mention it. This does not have regenerative braking. So you do rely on those disc brakes and it would be a really nice feature to have just a button to, to put load on that motor and, uh, and recharge the battery. I think that'd be a really nice feature for them to add in the future. Let's try these steps one more time and see what happens. Same deal that time, front forks bottomed out and the kickstand came down. I never noticed on these stairs either though, but they have a little ramp for pushing your bicycle up it. How awesome is that? It works really well too. Next day, we are fully charged up again, and we're gonna do another range test, this time on five bars, but pedaling hard the entire time. So of course, that's gonna vary depending on how hard you pedal and how heavy you are, but I'm gonna see if I can make it to Bristol and back. Hopefully, maybe get 30 miles, 40 miles, we'll see. Just reset the trip, so let's go. I've taken the exact same route as last time, and with me pedaling full, it seems that the power assist 
bars are going anywhere from like two to four bars. So this should be conserving quite a bit. Our speed's around 19 and a half mile an hour, even with me pedaling. Oh, I made it to Bristol and I just shut this off at 10 miles because I want to pedal here for a second and see what my actual speed is. So let's see if fire back up. This is no assistance. So I, I'd say my the effort I'm putting in on this windy day is about 11 mile an hour effort. Uh, it's, it's a heavy bike. And there it is guys, 35 miles. So I'm gonna lock this up now and take probably an hour break before we ride back home. And that'll be equivalent to what we did last time. Oh, hi. Met up with Jen, doing a little riding around Bristol, rocking the, the V4. Maybe top speed. All right, well, this girl convinced me to have two margaritas. It's gonna be a rough ride home. All right, a couple hours later, 6.53, heading out, 35 miles, and we got, we're got we showing four, what is that, five bars on the battery. So uh, we should be able to make it. Let's find out. I'm just passing the point at which we ran out of battery last time. So, uh, and we we, get, we got two bars on here. A Little bit of a headwind on this stretch too. It's just killing the battery. Well, we made it back. And with a few miles to spare, as soon as we got close by, I just started doing loop-de-loo around the block. And we're at 51 miles is where it cut out on me. So we started at uh, 24. That's 26 miles. So substantial difference if you're pedaling. Again, I was holding a 19.5 the entire way. If you bumped this, I was holding five bar assist the whole time too. If you uh, bump this down to two or three bar and you pedal a little harder or you bring your average speed down to maybe 13 mile an hour instead of 19.5, well then you could probably get 50 miles out of this. I wouldn't doubt it. But uh, yeah, substantial difference if you you're cruising 20 and you're pedaling, definitely get some more miles out of it, as you can see. So uh, I'm freezing cold now because the temperature dropped dramatically outside and I'm uh, gonna wrap this up. I would say my only complaints on this bike is the fact that it doesn't have a front or rear light or a bell or just any accessories, like maybe a cup holder, a little storage bag, something like that. Uh, and the fat tires, you know, I am a fan of them when you're under power, but when you're pedaling with no power, they definitely drag you down a lot. The fat tire definitely rides nice. It just is not great when your battery goes dead and you're pedaling on your own. And if you know me, you know I could ramble all night, so I'll go ahead and cut this off here. But if you watched this video this far, I hugely appreciate that. Big thumbs up to Avon Trek for sending me this bike and let me try it out. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a big thumbs up. The Mac Rover 100. This is a really solid, well built, well thought out bicycle, electric bicycle, and I hope to get many, many hundreds of miles out of it before doing any ma any uh, maintenance. No nonsense, no how. Hope to see you again. And like usual at the end, I try to put some clips of the user manual in here. So this is the Mac Rover 100. I'll just flip through here so you can pause on either page if you want to view more. Hopefully things look okay. I know this is pretty barbaric. And, uh, but yeah, it's the easiest way to do this. So this is a big long book. Of course I just ramble on as I'm doing this too. Try to just hold the kitty, the kitty. Put the camera real steady for a second. So you get that one second, you can pause it. Page 11. How to charge the battery. Most of this stuff is pretty, pretty basic. But, you know, some people, like myself, a little windy today, uh, may, may find it handy. Safety tips. <laughs> like covering the, the words up. There you go, the specs. That's what you really want. Sorry, I was actually reading them. 
that's enough time for you to pause it and there's the back of it their contact information and then I guess this is an add-on for the display I'll go in close on this a little bit Here's some of the codes you might get E36, E37, up top here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Get that last clip. Oh, come on, you know. There you go. All right, good stuff. See you guys again in another video.